or 15 days prior to your, your meeting, and we met those requirements. Um, the planning commission, um, the month of May, pushed their meeting up a week. So we were on a, a timeline, but we did satisfy statutory requirements. Go back to the other, to, to the other uh, layout. Now, the, we're talking about a six foot opaque fence along the entire north boundary line. Yes, and that's at the top of that. Okay. What's the total distance there? Um, I calculated, based on the survey, I calculated about 980 feet. Okay. So, give us an understanding of the existing conditions there. Um, now, because when I visited the site, what I noticed was that there is some, there is some buffer there, there is some vegetation, there is some fencing there. be clear that the board understands what we're buffering against. You know, I mean, what I saw was, if you look north on that picture there, um, the, so we're talking one single family residence, and then directly behind that, which is to the north of the, uh, of the facility, there is some buffering there. It's not mature yet, but there is some buffering there, and we're buffering against what? Um, pasture, <laughs> a pasture. But um, our buffering requirements is based on the zoning district, not the actual use on the property. And we had some flaws with that, especially when we have churches against vacant property that happen to be residential. They have to provide for a buffer. Um, in this case, the neighbor to the north have planted some trees, but that's on their side. Mr. Colton will be required to do the vegetation on his side of the property. So even though there's vegetation there, the northern property owner has the right to pull them up at any time they want by right. And, you, and the county's making sure that, that they don't get pulled up. Right, right. Now, the applicant, if he can speak to this um, further, has agreed to construct a six-foot privacy fence along just a portion of that north property line. But it's TRC's recommendation that he um, construct that entire length of that north property line. Questions for staff? On the timeline of use, from all the case, there's a gap from 2007 to the present. So it would appear that prior to that, this place was used as a construction company. But what happened from 2007 to the present? Do you know? I mean, you may not know. I'm asking if you know. From 2007, there was a business license pulled for the, the KDA business. And it was for home occupation, which basically means you can't do anything on the site. And unbeknown to us, you know, Mr. Copeland has been working here for over 20 years. And um, so it was his business license or business license in the past have been approved for home occupation. Um, just in that case, he apparently operated illegally. Okay. Any but he has a license, it's not, it's just not the proper one. Is that what you're saying? There's no current license on file. No. There hasn't been since 2007? No. Okay. Any other questions for Tom? I have a question about the residential property that's to the north there. Um, how long have those people been there? Like, have they been there before 2007 or after 2007? They've been there for quite a while. Um, I believe they are here. They, uh, they can speak to that. They've been there at least 15 to 20.
is the applicant or his representative here to speak on my representative? The applicant. Go through this time. In support. That's right. I'm out of 
Glenn Davis from a 3284 Lock Laurel Road. Um, if you look at that piece of property, our property joins on the south side. Uh, you can see uh, the houses and the lakes and all in there, but that's where our property joins on the south side. You can see my barn and shop and all in there. Okay. Um, I mowed part of that property. Uh, not because John asked me to, but the property is joined and it's pretty. So when my wife and I mow it, we mow the grass over there. Uh, the guys in his shop, Help you take care of lawnmowers, the golf cart, the pickup trucks. They repair most everything. They're good guys. If there's a barrier fence put up, we have to drive all the way out to the road and drive down the road on our golf cart, which is illegal, and drive out the road to come in there. Uh, if he wanted to put a fence up on the north side, we'd have a problem with that. Right, and then that's all we're talking about. We're not yeah. talking about that. We don't have any, we don't have any problem at all. Uh, I've been there 12 years. Um, the noise is very minimal. You, know, you hear more noise with military helicopters coming over landing than the airport than you hear uh, over there. And since Valdez Airport is a, a training base for movie, we see a lot of military aircraft coming across us. And it's very noisy. But uh, there's no problem back there at all. John takes care of the place, and us and neighbors all help him when we can. So uh, we just want to speak in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else speak in favor of Mr. Copeland's request? Yeah, my name is Charles Miles. I live at 3274, and my property adjoins uh, John's on the south side. And these shoppers totally view, visible from my backyard. I have absolutely no complaint with John. He's a fine neighbor. I don't have a noise problem at all. Uh, supporting in every, every respect. Uh, the only thing that I question, I don't know anything about zoning requirements, but if you require him to put up a fence adjoining my property, I'd be up here complaining because I, I don't want a privacy fence on my side. I don't understand why he's required to put one on the north side when he's not required to put one on the east, south, or west side. Uh, other than that, I don't have, I don't have anything to say. So you have, as you said, I hear you say noise. No, you say no, no, no. I mean, like, like uh, Alan says, we have airplanes, we're in the flight path. We have airplanes and helicopters come over our house numerous times during the day, and they, they have a lot more noise than John. And the river is really, not in noise. Occasionally, you'll be on him or something, but other than that, I don't care.
we did a lot more work and made a lot more noise than what has gone on there in the last two or three years. We started before daylight and we stayed till after dawn. And Mr. Robert has always been a good neighbor. Uh, you know, he lived right across the street from us and we never had any complaints from anybody. And whatever noise is going on there now is a lot less than it used to be. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, time for the opposition. Is there anyone here in opposition to this request? Prepare to speak. Mr. Robert, uh, my name is William Marks. I am uh, Mr. Roberts' son-in-law. Uh, and just to answer a couple of the questions, uh, it's not the noise from diesel trucks. Wait, wait a minute. Just it, before diesel. you get started, let me, let me just ask to make sure. Okay, so okay. you're representing Mr. Robert Cutler, correct? Right. Okay. I, but you don't live there. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Go ahead. That's all. Okay. Well, <coughs> keep in your mind, where, where is the, the person you're representing live? If you look at the next one. Oh. Go that way. You said Momo? Yes. So. Okay. That is his property. That's not right. where he lives. That's not where he lives? That's not where he lives. Lives across the street. Uh, he's just recently acquired that property about two or three years ago. Prior to that, he was owned by Mr. John Copeland's family. Um, since then, so we're answering, uh, and I guess I've got something written prepared. I don't know if you want to have it or not. Uh, his property has been leased to a truck <coughs> repair service, diesel truck repair service. We're talking not just a diesel truck that's driven down the street as you know, truck. Big rate repair service as well, which we think consequently is not in compliance with the code. Which was Mr. Kirk's first question was uh, the zoning district that he's in is not crossroads commercial, it is residential agricultural. <coughs> one district. And, uh, and so, what he's asking for is to play, not place this buffer. Uh, what we're asking for is obviously that his property not be zoned commercial. This is the board meeting on the uh, buffer requirements, right? And I'm um, stated under 4311. And also under that code requirements that the buffer be placed and maintained by the property owner um, requesting that variance. And I guess that's sitting <coughs> on section code 4706B-6. You all know that, obviously. Um, we also have uh, the property question is rezoned commercial crossroads does not seek to preserve and mix uh, the agricultural and residential character uh, that we're trying to, to keep. Yeah. Prior to Mr. Uh, Robert buying the property, there was no interaction as far as, uh, there was no business being run for the past three years, so we weren't aware of that. The noise did start, the noise is present. Uh, there's a lot of property owners that are here in favor of that. However, they're not <laughs> in direct uh, line of the road that's being used, used by these semi-trucks or trucks. And there is some sort of buffer on the adjoining members' properties. There's trees, but a lot more distance. Um, we also have submitted 21 signatures of surrounding property owners who uh, oppose this action. Um, I believe the packet was given to all. Um, and, and yes, we also, we understood what Ms. Carmel said about the 21st. We were not able to be there present to oppose that. Um, excessive noise, odor, and rights to provide privacy are in question. And it's our intention, hopefully, to build a home back there, which would be on, I wish I had another little laser pointers point for you guys where it would be. Um, so, <laughs> Northwest. Northwest. All right, thank you. Uh, and it's a great pleasure to be in, in uh, the, a property owner here in Lowndes County, but we don't want that excessive noise. And also, something was said, we do have horses that are back there, so, you know, there's a there's an idea of protecting them from the noise or debris or, or whatever. Um, we don't know whether there's a plan for a hazardous waste disposal from a truck repair shop. You know, there are federal regulations that 
prevent them from happening all that. Um, does he have a plan for that? If he does not, you know, if he does, where is it? Uh, um, we didn't want to force anybody out of business with our complaints. They were sad compliance. Uh, they were in a residential uh, agricultural zone area. I'd like to reiterate that it's a non-commercial crossroads. Uh, uh, any questions from you? Sure. Well, just as a point of clarification, like you said, yes. I, I think you all did you it seems to me I don't know, maybe speaking out of turn, but um, your issue seems to be more with the zoning, which obviously like it is truly we we have nothing to do, we have no control over that. Uh, right, right. commissioners and the GOPs and you know, what we're trying to determine is that making the assumption that, that rezoning goes through and he's successful with that, is there a need for a buffer? And that's why I put into question how these meetings were held, the variance being requested prior to the zoning being requested. Uh, well, what I hear you saying is if this rezoning is successful, should the variance request come after that? If we were here fast forward six months or right. six weeks, whatever. I feel a little bit, yeah. You would still Definitely be here. in favor of a buffer. Definitely be in favor for a buffer. Um, be fair, you know, yeah. there's a reason why there's zoning requests or zoning plans in place, you know, and buffer requirements in place, and it's to protect the neighbors. Yes, there's neighbors on either side who are saying they don't oppose it, but we're within our right to ask for a buffer in place. Okay. Any questions? Question board? How long have you lived there? Uh, Mr. Copeland has owned the property about three years, plus three years. Okay. Is, this, is the activity 